Many years ago, I found this cool website that lets you type code like a professional hacker you see in the movies. You can press any key and proper code appears on screen like magic. Now that's just a fun little website. But what if it weren't? Leo is a program I made to auto-type real code, or any text really, in any environment you want. It overwrites the keys on your keyboard according to something that is pre-written. I've been using it to teach in class, to give guest lectures at other universities, and to make YouTube videos since 2021. So it's a tool for teachers to code live without fear of making mistakes, so they can focus on the explanations and interacting with the class rather than typing code letter by letter. Coincidence or not, when I began using Leo is also the time the channel started growing. I think the switch from doing voiceovers to this more personal way of making tutorials play the role, and it's far easier to edit when the code you type has no mistakes. It's called Leo, same as my son, because I built it soon after he was born. I had a hard time teaching and making videos back then. Really had to be 100% for those, and as a fresh parent, that wasn't really happening. So simply put, Leo wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for him. Leo also stands for Lupsakastia Ehiasti Ohjelmoit, Finnish for programming in a relaxed and coherent way, which I think describes well how it feels when using it. Leo went through many versions over the years, and now it's perfect for my needs. But I would like it to be useful for others as well, so I'm making it open source, hoping it will evolve into a more generally useful thing someday. In this video, I'll show you how to install and use Leo to follow a lesson plan the one I used when making this YouTube video. I'll explain how to use Visual Studio Code and how to set things up so everything works as expected. Finally, I'll show you how to start making a lesson plan from scratch. Now let me teach you how to teach someone a lesson. Get it? Because Leo helps you. No, no, no. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. You can get Leo running in two ways. First, using an installer created by my colleague, Ansi Grön. We've tested it on several computers, Windows 10 and above, and it should work. But if it doesn't for some reason, or you want to check the source code yourself, you can set it up manually like so. First, install Python. Then, auto hotkey. It's the tool that allows to overwrite keys in Windows. We're using this older version because it was the only option when I started making Leo in 2021. Finally, install this Python package so it can interact with AutoHotkey. Now Leo is ready. You can start it from here and open the demo lesson plan from the plans folder. We won't start auto-typing just yet. First, we need to open a code editor, and I recommend we both use VS Code this time. Leo is designed to work with any editor, but we'll need to configure it in a very specific way for it to work as expected. I'm only explaining it for VS Code, so you'll get the idea, and you can do the same in your favorite editor as well. By default, VS Code has features that help developers type code quickly. We'll disable these using a special settings file I provided. This is important when teaching to avoid too much code appearing all at once, or those windows that pop up all the time. They sometimes block what students are trying to read. These are very confusing and make it challenging to keep up, even for experienced developers. Of course, we encourage students to experiment with these features and even AI nowadays, but when delivering the lesson, it's best to keep everyone synchronized with the focus on one thing only, the blinking cursor. To strip VS Code of those fancy features, we open the settings JSON file and paste those I provided. You may want to back up your previous settings if you're an active VS Code user and got it just the way you want it. Now VS Code works more like a basic text editor and that lesson plan I provided is fully compatible. Otherwise, extra code would appear during the lesson, like extra closing brackets, curly braces, or whatever VS Code decides to help you with. You could write a lesson plan using a syntax that accounts for those, but I don't really recommend doing that. Now let's use Leo to teach how to code that drawing app for logos made out of circles, like the Twitter logo used to be. Inside an empty file called index.html, 
press start. Now auto typing starts, and if we type random letters here, real code appears. But Leo disappears, and it might be good to see it so we know how far along we are. Sometimes I have it on a second screen, so no need to do anything special. But very often I use just my laptop when teaching, and for that I need this window always on top. To get it like that, we double click this script here, and then pressing Ctrl Shift Space will make the active window always stay on top. Of course, the students shouldn't see this window, so when you're teaching or recording videos, share only the code editor. I use OBS for that. Now as we're typing, you'll see where you are in the lesson plan. This auto-typing only works if you press lowercase letters on the keyboard. You can type numbers and special characters normally. This is because I often play with values to demonstrate how they affect the end result and don't want to bother pausing Leo all the time. I also sometimes type short comments and use uppercase for that. I realize these things are very specific to my way of doing things, but you can always change how the tool works since you have the source code. Or just let me know how you think it should be. Anyway, you can pause auto-typing by pressing Ctrl P, and all keys will work as usual. Press Ctrl P again to continue auto-typing. Let me remove this mess, and ah, I accidentally removed some part of the code. No problem, we can go back and forth through the plan by holding Ctrl and pressing the left and right arrow keys. We can also jump anywhere by holding Ctrl while clicking. This is very useful when there are multiple ways of implementing something and students choose one way over another. Now, the code here looks a bit cryptic, with these arrows and special symbols. This is backspace, this is up, this is end, this is down, and this is safe. These are here because we don't normally type code top to down. We often go back and forth a few times. The save is there because I often forget to do that, and I don't like the autosave feature in VS Code. I find the live reload distracting because it fires whenever it wants. Anyway, now we can test the code in the browser. But we don't see much. I normally open the developer tools now to show the canvas is there, just transparent. Let's add the styles to make it visible somehow. Notice how the code goes behind this window now. With the Leo window selected, because of that script from earlier, we can Ctrl Shift T to make it transparent. This lets us see the code through it. Now in VS Code, we can Ctrl click this and it creates the file and opens it. Inside, we can give the canvas a border, save, and test. I go back in the main file to make the canvas larger and give it an ID to prepare for JavaScript. Now, I'm very familiar with where these are supposed to go, so my comments here don't explain exactly where each line has to be. It's your responsibility to make the plans as descriptive as they need to be. But concise plans are easier to navigate, so it's a personal choice, I believe. Now the JavaScript goes in this file, and we can already click to draw circles with a fixed radius. Usually I explain things like hard-coded values are bad, there should be a meaningful name here like radius, then above I define it, and add the event listener for changing it using the wheel. We debug incrementally to see if the event listener works, and investigate in the console which attributes we need to use to update the radius, and then do the update. So even if I know how to solve the problem, I guide the students how to find the solution themselves. Now, I want to visualize somehow that the circle will appear on click. We can use a div for that, and to style it, we use CSS, making it look like a circle with a dashed line. Every time the wheel event is detected, I modify those div properties according to the x, y, and radius. Now, this only updates that dashed circle when moving the wheel. It should also update when moving the mouse, so we need another listener. Great, but a small glitch happens because the border has a thickness of one pixel. We can fix it by subtracting one from the left and top values. Now, because minus and one are not trigger keys, I can just type this normally. No need to pause Leo for that. Then I want to implement erasing as well. Let's use left click to create a circle and right click to cut a circular hole. I want the circle to be blue and the cutout is just a white circle drawn on top for now. Ah, the right click menu is annoying. We can remove it like this and now the app is functional. You can use it to draw circles and cut out circles as well. 
But if you save the image, it's transparent here, but not where we draw the white circles on top. So we can do a proper cutout using global composite operations. The color can be blue now always, and if left click is pressed, we use source over. Otherwise, I just copy this and only type destination out. Notice how I don't have Leo type two long lines that are almost the same, because no one codes like that, it's not natural. Finally, we can add this line after the radius changes to prevent it from getting too small or have negative values. That's it. If you check the tutorial I have at the channel, you'll notice it's exactly the same. I used this plan then, and I can reuse it if I want to teach it again someday, maybe as a live demo at the school. I think kids would like to draw with an app they made themselves, and it can be a nice creative moment to see what all can be drawn with just circles. I save all my lesson plans in this way. You may recognize some of them from the YouTube titles. This is phase two of the self-driving car course. Phase one isn't here because it was written in an older version of Leo and is incompatible now. I could convert those older plans to this new format, but I don't think I ever will. The JavaScript syntax in those is a bit outdated, so if anything, I'll need to rewrite those plans using a more modern approach. Speaking of which, here's how to make a new plan from scratch. Let's make it for the logo drawing app we just coded. First, I usually add the comment field to say what the plan is for and if we need any special preparation. Then we start with the HTML, but now it has too many things, so I'll undo to get the basic structure. I copy this in an auto-typing field. Now if you leave it like this, it would work, but nobody types code top to down like that. So we need to use those special characters to move the cursor around. That can be tedious. So I implemented this button that does it automatically in a way I'm comfortable with. It isn't perfect. So you always want to test to see if you get what you expect. It's okay, because you can quickly do that using Leo. And see, here VS Code doesn't align these well for some reason. We need to update the plan and add the backspace here so it works properly. This is strange, because here, VS Code doesn't need the backspace, it works automatically. Anyway, because of small differences in how editors work, I advise to always go through the plan at least once to see if it works as expected. It doesn't take long since you can use Leo to autotype it for you, and you can hold the key to go as fast as it can. Now these two down arrow keys are here for some reason. I replace them with a save, so the file is saved before testing, and let's move on to the styles. After the styles, we can set the size of the canvas, we can then give it an ID, and so on. Just add the steps alternating between those yellow comments for the teacher and the code you want Leo to type. Hope you find Leo useful. Thanks for watching, and see you guys.